Hi everyone. Happy to meet you once again. Today, let us study a new prose lesson. And I say, in celebration of being alive. In celebration of being alive. By Dr. Christian Bernard. Page number 41. Take a test books out of you. The essay In Celebration of Being Alive by Dr. Christian Bernard. Okay. So, he was a South African heart surgeon from 1922 to 2001. Dr. Christian Bernard was a heart surgeon from 1922 to 2001. South African heart surgeon. And he did the world's first successful human heart transplantation. I repeat, it was he who made first successful human heart transplantation. Yes, don't forget that. He was the first to do human heart transplantation. Successful human heart transplantation. Okay. Uh, the details are given there in the last part about the other. I mean, let us come to the lesson proper. Let us move to the lesson. Take page number 41. Okay. The first paragraph. More and more as I near the end of my career, as a heart surgeon, H-E-A-R-T is not hurt, but a heart. As I near, I am nearing the end of my career, my profession, as a heart surgeon. Yes, he was, near, he was at the evening of his life, he finds that the end of my career is very near. So he turns back and uh, just observes. You see, what does he see? My thoughts have turned to the consideration. My thoughts. It is turning to the consideration. I began to consider why people should suffer. Yes, I began thinking about this fact, why people in the world should suffer? Why is there suffering in the world, in the whole world? I began thinking in this way. As I am nearing the end of my career as a doctor, of course, the place of a doctor in our life is very important. Is it not so? So he says, I began thinking, considering the fact why people should suffer. Yes, suffering seems so cruelly prevalent. He continues to say, suffering seems so cruelly prevalent. Prevalent is common. We can find everywhere. Suffering is quite common. Everywhere we can see. In the world today, of course, it is quite significant. Even today. Why? We see suffering everywhere. The greatest disaster the mankind has ever seen. Corona disaster. Yes. So, we see suffering everywhere. Around. You look out, you see suffering everywhere. We, we ourselves can think this way. Why there is suffering? Why there is suffering in the world? Can the world move on without suffering? Why? He is thinking. He is thinking aloud. 
Why there is suffering? The root cause of all suffering. Why it is so? As he was nearing the end of his career, as a heart surgeon, he began thinking about the fact why people in the world should suffer. Yes, and he finds that suffering seems so cruelly prevalent. Means common, quite common in the world today. You look everywhere, you find suffering everywhere. Yes, and he began asking himself, why people should suffer in this way? Yes, do you know that of 125 million children born this year, 125 million children born this year, one year, 125 million children are born. 12 million are unlikely to reach the age of 1. Mortality rate is so high among children. 125 million, even 12 will not reach the age of a 1 year of age. And another 6 million will die before the age of 5. Another 6 million will die before they reach the age of 5. How many children die every day? How many children suffer? Yes. And of the rest, many will end up as mental or physical cripples. What is cripple? Handicapped or having some deformity? See, another, I mean, uh, among the remaining, many will end up as mental or physical Cripples, handicapped, hands not there, legs not there, some part of the body, you see, having some uh, deformity, some problem which can never be cured and they have to suffer uh, the entire life for that suffering, suffering, suffering and suffering. So you look around among children, only about children, 125 million children are born, one year. In that 12, will, 12 million people, Children will not reach the age of one. They will die of many reasons. Uh, diseases, even accidents. Yes. I mean many things, many reasons are there. But uh, out of 125 million children born, even 12 million will not reach the age of one. And 6 million will not reach at the age of five. They will die before reaching the age of five. And the rest, the remaining people, either mentally or physically crippled, they would become. So I see suffering everywhere. So I began asking myself, says Dr. Christian Bernard, why people should suffer? Suffering seems so cruelly prevalent. Everywhere it is there. It is quite common. I find suffering everywhere. And I began asking myself, why? People should suffer. Yes. As he was nearing the end of his career as a heart surgeon, a doctor, he began asking himself, why there is suffering in the world? Why there is suffering? Can there be a world where there is no suffering? He began asking in many ways. In many ways he began thinking. Yes. So he asked himself, why people should suffer? And he says the, I mean, uh, mathematics of uh, you know, mortality rate among children. What is that? Uh, 125 million children born one year. Out of that, 12 million will now reach the age of one. And 6 million will now reach the age of uh, uh, five. And the remaining, many will end up in physically or uh, physical or mental cripples or crippled children. Okay. Second paragraph. My gloomy thoughts. Gloomy means sad, you know. These sad thoughts, why people should suffer? Probably stem from. Stem is originate, originated. I got this kind of sad or gloomy thoughts from an accident I had few years ago. Yes. It was from an accident I had met with a few years ago. My own experience of meeting with an accident. He narrates his own example of meeting with the suffering. 
one minute i was crossing the street while i was crossing the street within one minute accident can happen in one second also one minute ah uh, crossing the street with my wife after a lovely meal together hearty meal lump sum hearty meal we had at home and we were crossing the road and next minute a car hit to me and knocked me uh, into my wife a car came suddenly rushing and hit to me and i was thrown over my own wife she was thrown into the other lane many lanes are the street now yes may there may be uh, i mean lane for taxis uh, lane for lorries lane for uh, two wheelers even five six lane might be there in western english generally okay big street so i was thrown into other lane other street nearby yes and you see struck by a car coming from the opposite direction see i was hit and i was thrown and i was struck by a car coming from the opposite direction during the next few days in the hospital i was admitted in the hospital and during the next few days i experienced not only agony and fear i had experienced i had to experience agony and fear agony is also kind of pain but terrible and horrible agony of death is not so pain simply we can say pain physical pain only we say is not so if is inner is a ache headache stomach ache not head pain or stomach pain is not so yes i see prick of conscience pangs of childbirth agony of death it's a pain in different forms you no know? agony of death pain but not really physical pain see agony and fear i was worried i was in pain not physical but many kinds of yes agony and fear but also anger i got angry also see i got angry why i could not understand why my wife and i had to suffer i could not understand we are su- we were suffering myself and my wife why had we to suffer i asked to myself what wrong had we committed i was asking myself why should we suffer like this i had 11 broken ribs and a perforated lung ribs bones in this part is he uh, here is he uh, ribs bones are there 11 uh, ribs were broken and my lungs was damaged perforated means make hole into here i not excite hole but uh, lungs got some kind of damage this what okay in that accident i was seriously injured many bones were broken lungs also got damage my wife had a badly fractured shoulder shoulder was fractured you know fracture okay now yes my wife also had to suffer to fractured shoulder over and over i asked myself i asked myself why should this happen to us why this should happen to us i had work to do many duties i had to perform a doctor i am perform i had to perform many duties after all and there were patients waiting for me many were waiting for me my patients waiting expectantly at my service they were all and they are waiting they were waiting and i am suffering like this i am admitted in a hospital why should i suffer like this i asked myself ah uh, waiting for me to operate on the heart surgeon a surgeon one who makes surgery operation surgery operation so being a surgeon i got to perform many operations and they were waiting and unfortunately i met with an accident and i am suffering now and why should this happen to me i asked myself my wife had a young baby who needed her care my wife had a young baby to look after and who needed her care she wants to take care of a small child of course only mother can take care of a small children 
Only mother can. Nobody else can. You see, substitute it. And the baby needs her care. Yes. And she was also admitted in a hospital. And we are suffering. And why this should happen to us? I began asking myself. So he began asking the biggest question ever. Why people should suffer? You can ask yourself also, why this corona in the uh, humanity? When will it be cured? What lesson we have to learn from this? What lesson we have to learn from this? From our experience of meeting with corona, not personal but humanity as a whole. Because uh, it is there everywhere, in every country it is there. People are suffering. Many have already died. Many are still suffering. There is suffering everywhere, not only about children, it's applicable to each and every one. And you can ask yourself, why should I suffer? Is it my fault? Is it something else? Yes, he is trying to find the answer. Why should people suffer? He asked himself, why should I suffer? I am a surgeon doing surgery. People are waiting, you see, uh, to, uh, and I should attend their operation. And I am suffering like this, why should I suffer like this? He asked himself, and my wife should take care of a small baby and we are suffering. So, he began asking himself from his own experience of meeting with an accident. It was when he met with an accident, this thought came to him and he began asking why he should suffer or why people should suffer. What's the reason for suffering in the whole world? He began asking himself. Next paragraph. My father, understand clearly, had he still been alive, if he had been alive still, which means he is already dead, he is no more. Had he been alive, had my father been alive, if he had been alive, my father would have said, this question, what question, why people should suffer? He would have answered, if he had been alive, had my father been alive, if my father had been alive, he would have answered me, what? My son, it is God's will. The will of God it is. You are suffering because God wants you to suffer. It's the will of God. He might have, he would have answered, My son, oh my son, it is God's will. Who would have answered, My father, says Dr. Christian Bernard. Had he been alive, if he had been alive, he would have answered me. Oh my son, it is God's will. That is a way God tests you. God is testing you. By giving you suffering, God is testing you. Would have been the answer of my father. Suffering ennobles you. Makes you noble, ennoble. Suffering ennobles you. And makes you a better person. That is the opinion of his father. Had he been alive, the doctor says, if he had been alive, he would have answered me. Why should people suffer? My son, it's God's will. Fate, not simply fate. God wants you to suffer because suffering ennobles a person and makes him better. So how is the difference? What is the difference between the opinion of Dr. Christian Bernard and his father. Now, first let us see the opinion of his father. He would have once said, My son, it is the will of God that you should suffer. It is the will of God that you must suffer. God is testing you. Yes, God is testing you. Suffering ennobles a person. You see, and makes him better according to Dr. Bernard's father. I repeat, According to Dr. Bernard's father, suffering ennobles a person, means makes him noble. You see, uh, ennobles you, makes you a better person. Understand it very clearly. According to, according to Dr. Christian Bernard's father, suffering ennobles a person and makes him better. 
It is a will of God that a man should suffer. God is testing you by giving you suffering. Yes, but as a doctor, being a doctor, I am a doctor, no. After all, I am a doctor. I see nothing noble. I cannot see any nobility. I see nothing noble in a patient thrashing around such a soaked bed. Means moving here and there. In the hospital you can find, especially government hospitals won't be that much neat and clean. Such would be there on the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, bed sheet, uh, on the bed, etc. Such a soaked bed. Is it not so? Soaked with the sweat, sweating. You see? Uh, people or patients moving here and there are restless. I don't find any nobility in the suffering of people. What is that? Eh? I see nothing noble in the suffering of a, a patient. A patient thrashing around, means moving around in a set soaked bed. Yes, which means suffering. I find no nobility in the suffering of a man or a patient. Mind clouded in agony. His mind clouded, means filled with, you know, Clouding is not just like a cloud. Many fears, many worries would be there in his mind. His mind won't be at rest. You can imagine now, suddenly a man gets some uh, uh, health problem, maybe disease, maybe accident. He may have been doing so many things at home. Uh, he may have many liabilities, etc. And he should think every day how it, what to do next on the following day. And suddenly he is in a hospital. His mind would never be at rest. He is moving around. What to do tomorrow? What to do? How to solve the problem? What to do? What to do? What to do? Yes. Worried. Anxious. Disturbed. Thrashing around a set soaked bed. I find no nobility in such, a, such kind of a suffering. Says Dr. Christian Bernard. As he, his mind clouded in, clouded in agony. Nor can I see any nobility. Neither can I. I cannot find any nobility in the crying of a lonely child in a ward night. In a ward, see government hospital probably, a lonely, very few would be there in the night, many will be sleeping, only few would be there during the night, many were suffering, many won't be sleeping and a small child crying out of his unsufferable pain. What nobility is there? Why the child should suffer like that? Crying, crying and crying and crying. But I find no nobility. In such kind of a suffering, I find no nobility, says Dr. Christian Bernard. So he finds no nobility in the suffering of people, whether his children or grown up men. But according to his father, suffering ennobles a person and makes him better. God is testing him. God is testing. You see, in this way, he ennobles a person and makes him better according to his father. But he disagrees with his father. He says that I see no nobility in the suffering of people, whether it is children or ignored men. For example, a man thrashing around such a soaked bed or the cry of a child in a, in a ward, hospital ward, in a lonely ward in the night, what nobility is there? I find no nobility there. So he could not agree with his father why people should suffer. The story goes on. I got my first introduction to the suffering of children. My first experience of suffering. When I was a little boy. Yes, when I was a small boy. One day, my father showed me a half-eaten, one day, my father showed me a half-eaten mouldy biscuit, biscuit, mouldy, because, uh, you know, the, I mean, uh, food items uh, in the open air will be affected uh, with the fungus, etc. It's mouldy, that's what, you see, mouldy biscuit, yes, with the two tiny tooth marks in it, two tiny tooth marks. Why? And he told me about my brother. He told me about my brother who had died several years earlier. He had died years before. Yes. 
he told me about the suffering of this child my own brother he told me my father told me about my own brother who had been born in a uh, with an abnormal heart he had been born with an abnormal heart even when he was born his heart was not normal abnormal heart he had been alive, he had been born today had he been born today medical science has improved a lot had he been born today probably someone could have corrected that heart problem yes someone would have or could have corrected that heart problem but in those days they didn't have a sophisticated heart surgery during those days they did not have this sophisticated miss modern heart surgery see medical science has improved a lot and this moldy biscuit was the last biscuit my brother had eaten before his death yes he kept it there in memory of his uh, son his father and he showed uh, our christian bernard that is a, this is a, a last biscuit your brother had eaten and he was born with a uh, with an abnormal heart and there was no chance of him recovering from that but had he been born today someone would have corrected that heart problem he would have been alive we know that many of the diseases which were incurable once upon a time is curable now for example even tb yes our john keats now the greatest of all romantic poets of course greatest is uh, uh, i mean uh, william wordsworth keats was also very important his brother died of tb incurable during those days and he wrote, wrote about that when youth grows fatter thin and dies tb affected his uh, energy will be gone he will become thin youth grows fatter thin and dies and later on he himself understood that he was suffering from tb and he will drew from all i mean his uh, uh, relations and all his activities and he too died of that at the age of 26 he wrote some poetry extraordinary but he died at the age of 26 john keats yes so it was incurable those days now quite curable in the same way our corona also would be curable at the latest stage anyhow our uh, uh, doctor christian bernard says that uh, had he been born today someone would have corrected that heart problem but during those days uh, this uh, modern Uh, uh, sophisticated surgery uh, surgeries were not there so he could not survive the heart problem and this moldy biscuit was the last biscuit my brother had eaten before his death i was told that this was the last biscuit he had eaten before his death there is a first meeting with the suffering though it was an accident that prompted him to write this essay his first meeting with suffering was when he was very small a child when he was a small child his own brother sorry his own father showed him a biscuit half eaten moldy biscuit yes it was the last biscuit his brother had eaten before his death that was his first experience of meeting with the suffering Let's move on to the next paragraph, next page. Yes. As a doctor, I have always found the suffering of children particularly heartbreaking. Being a doctor, I always found that the suffering of children particularly heartbreaking. I always found that the suffering of children, it was particularly heart breaking why because they because of their total trust in doctors and nurses yes it was particularly heart breaking because of their total trust trust means faith belief in doctors and nurses they believe that the doctors will cure them so i found very often that uh, the suffering of children was particularly heartbreaking because of their uh, total trust in doctors and nurses yes they believe you are going to 
help them they believe that uh, uh, you are going to help them they are happy when you when a doctor goes to them and ask them something their name etc with a stethoscope on their uh, i mean a neck is it uh, they would believe that a doctor uncle will make everything okay doctor uncle is like a god for them is it not so they trust children trust doctors and nurses so they believe what our doctor uh, says doctor would say uh, generally okay you will be okay in a, in a week or two don't worry then they get that uh, uh, what's that confidence that they can overcome they trust in doctors and nurses ah uh, they believe you are going to help them they really believe they would believe that these doctors and nurses would help them if you can't they accept their fate if at all you cannot if at all you fail to help them in the sense that if they if they don't i mean get cured they won't blame the doctors and nurses things have changed now if any uh, death or any mistakes or anything happens uh, people will come and throw stones at the hospital and you are in danger okay na uh, world has changed a lot yes anyhow generally children they won't complain okay na they have trust total trust in doctors and nurses they believe that you are going to help them if you can't they believe as their fate not your fault now doctors fault but their fate with it okay now yes they go through mutilating surgery mutilate means cut into pieces means very complicated surgery they are willing to undergo what's uh, mutilating surgery and afterwards they don't complain even after that no complaint they don't complain that uh, uh, i am not cured is fault of for the doctor they would never say no complaint at all because they have a total trust in doctors and nurses so i found what's that suffering of children particularly heart breaking yes the doctor says that he found the suffering of children particularly heart breaking because of their total trust in doctors and nurses they believe that you are going to help them doctors should help them if not ah uh, they won't complain they take it as their fate yes one morning now he is going to narrate an incident which changed his attitude towards suffering there is a lesson we had learned in celebration of being alive what does it mean we are going to see that's why i don't explain the i, I mean um, <coughs> heading or the title in the beginning because we are going to see through the lesson itself so he is going to uh, narrate an incident which happened to him uh, not he, he experienced himself that changed his attitude towards suffering entirely yes one morning several years ago it was several years ago one morning i witnessed the, what i call the grand prix not prix grand prix of cape towns red cross children children's hospital one incident happened which he names as he is naming it as uh, is it a grand prix of cape towns red cross children hospital grand prix you know car race is it not so you might have read in newspapers you might have seen in the tv etc how the car race goes on i don't need to explain that he humorously names this incident as a car race which happened where red cross i mean um, a children's hospital where is it yes cape towns red cross children's hospital there happened an incident which our doctor calls it as a what's it i mean cape towns sorry grand prix of cape towns red cross children's hospital so this incident he names it as he humorously names it as grand prix a car race it is not a car race actually but he names humorously that it was a car race is see it opened to my eyes this incident opened to my eyes to the fact that there is a great fact 
I was missing something in all my thinking about suffering. I was missing something. Yes, I really missed something in my attitude towards suffering. Something basic that was full of solace for me, which was full of solace, means comfort. It comforted me. This incident opened my eyes and changed my attitude towards suffering. Yes, it was full of solace to me. Now, our Dr. Christian Bernard is narrating an incident which he, uh, ex I mean, he had experienced or he witnessed in a hospital, children's hospital, Red Cross Children's Hospital, which he humorously names it as a, a Cape Town Grand Prix of Cape Town Children's Hospital, Red Cross Children's Hospital. It opened my eyes to find that it opened my eyes. It's a new lesson for me. Which opened my eyes to find that I was missing something. Something was missing. In all my thinking about suffering. My thinking about suffering. I was missing something. I realized. I learned a new lesson. That I was missing something in all my thoughts about suffering. Something basic that was full of solace for me. Once again go through the pages we have seen. We will continue in the next video. Read it several times. Watch the video several times. And come prepared for second video. Thank you.